Hi, another new single cut beer came into the area. It's Jenny said, and also the double dry hopped version. They've only made their regular single dry hop version once, and uh, I haven't had that one. This one showed up in the Boston area. It was canned on May 24th, so this that was about three weeks ago. Maybe a little less, or no, yeah, about three weeks ago. And the kicker with this one is that they use very new, perhaps still unnamed, hop varieties from America, and they double dry hopped it. They also say they use English and US malts. Um, yeah, with some of their beers they use English ones, but most, most of the time they don't. 7.7% alcohol. They call it they, they call it an Imperial IPA, but you know, 7.7, .7, it's right on the edge. I mean, what does something magical happen when a, when a beer is 8% and that it becomes a double at some, or an Imperial something? I don't know. Let's give this one a try. I haven't even heard anyone's thoughts about how good this one is. Very pale. It doesn't have the slightly darker color that some of their English malted ones do, like uh, softly spoken magic spells. But oh, it looks beautiful. Very, very perfect head, like just what all the other, all the single cut beers have had. Ooh, lots a very candy like aroma. Cotton candy is almost the first thing I get. And bubble gum. Well, creamy, creamsicle, you get some of that vanilla frosting thing going on. It's not nearly as dank and potent and soapy as most single cup beers. That smells really sweet, it smells like, you know, uh, Smarties. And also, yeah, it's very sweet pineapple and peaches, but I'm not getting uh, a dank quality in there very much at all. Not resinous, not oniony, not soapy or garlicky. Yeah, it smells, it smells really nice. It's a little closer to Trillium than I feel like most of their, their beers uh, smell. But not exactly Trillium. We get a little bit of more spiciness in the flavor, but a lot of the same candy flavors are, are coming through, and our candy aromas are coming through in the flavor. And that's pretty nice. It's, it's it is rather sweet. It doesn't pack that bitter punch that almost all single cuts I've had um, do. I kind of like that because of it. It's yeah, it's not very bitter, and it doesn't have a, a weird savory edge to it. It's very, very candy fruit forward. Good amount of body. And not uh, little to no heat. And yeah, just a teeny bit of spiciness in, in the flavor with a, a touch of bitterness. But I like this, I like this one a lot. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a, the pithy thing that I notice on lots of single cuts, but it's just bringing in a little bit of a citrus pith flavor mixed in with this bubblegummy Smarties thing. It almost makes it reminds me of Belgian Belgian yeast flavors, but with this one, of course, it's not. I guess they use probably some sort of slightly fruity English yeast strain. Um, but what I want, I want to know what hop varieties these these are. Maybe they only have you know weird names like HBC three forty two or something, but. Um, I wish they would disclose that because then I would seek them out in other beers because I really like what it's done with uh, with their sort of house IPA character. These hops seem like they're less bitter, less resinous, and they really bring out the the fruitiness and everything that that single cut can do. And even though it's really rather sweet and it's a little bit strong, pretty refreshing. Very easy to drink. I'm gulping it down. But it has all these slightly artificial candy ish flavors like taffy, I said Smarties, cotton candy, cotton candy bubble gum. Um, and then, of course, there's like powdery sort of tropical fruits, powdery and like tropical fruit syrup mixed in there. 
um, I guess, and then I guess there's a really, really sweet ruby red grapefruit juice sort of finish I'm getting now. Yeah, it's not, there isn't too much, like, bitter, pithy fruitiness taking over at all, like I notice sometimes with the single cup beers. Yeah, this is, almost tastes like some sort of a northeast hazy Belgian IPA that is a style that doesn't quite exist. I once had a hoof-hearted beer that was like a new wave, big dry hopped Belgian triple, and this one kind of reminds me of that maybe. Um, I wonder if they use a different yeast strain than normal. Usually in, it's their IPA series called Harry Doesn't Mind where they use um, different yeast strains. Otherwise, I think they stick to the same one for all their IPAs. But they just vary quite a bit in how fruity, how fruity they are. And now I'm getting a, yeah, a touch of a, of a woody resin thing. At first, right when I swallow it, and it gets pithy, but it doesn't overwhelm all the interesting fruity candy flavors. And it just, the double dry hopping maybe just brings, uh, brings out the aroma a little bit, well, a little bit more. It is, it is pretty strong. Yeah, I just had a, a double IPA at some local brew pub place that had a great fruity flavor that wasn't so far off from this one, not as good, but then the aroma was not, was not there much at all. But yeah, that, that makes me appreciate the double dry hopping. Even though I think sometimes maybe I've had double dry hop beers that were a little bit more aromatic than this one, but it's still really, really big. And this makes that f the, f the fruity candy aromas explode. And I think all that fruity aroma makes makes me not perceive it as being at perhaps as bitter. Um, though I had the double dry hopped workers are going home double IPA from single cut that was stronger than this one. I didn't, I wasn't a huge fan of that one. Um, but that also I think featured American hop varieties, but not new experimental ones. Please disclose what hops are in this one. I will seek, I will seek them out. Maybe there's a blog post on Single Cut's website or they put it somewhere, but I didn't do any deep research on this one. Well, that's really nice. Um, and now that the flavor is turning savory, but and woodsy a bit, not quite pine, but it is an interesting sort of complex experience. How it gives a pretty, pretty darn good rating, 88. 89 bags of popcorn, getting close to the four and a half, which I rarely go over because I don't know. I just I don't want to say any beers are perfect. I don't want to say that most beers I review here are horrible because I usually pick out ones I think I'm gonna like. Um, I'm not doing purposefully like negative reviews, um, but this is one of the better single cuts. This one along with Salty Smoke and Magic Spells and Most Shuggy Soul Bender, and then there's Session IPA. Might be some of my other favorite ones. Weird and Gilly was pretty good, I guess. Um, but then I've had some batches of some that are too bitter, didn't get fruity, they're like super soapy. This one has a lot of single cut elements in it, but just a sweeter, softer, fruitier, candy-ish side um, that I really appreciate. That makes me highly recommend it for people who are into the more fruity, fruity, slightly sweeter, um, hazy IPA styles. All right, goodbye.